Sunday, late Sunday here in New York City. Welcome. Good, good morning, good morning. Get up and exercise. Kind of. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll see our way out of this this mess. Is the world really a mess? <laughs> it makes you wonder because if you read history, if you're if you ever read history, you always see like great thinkers said in these troubled times, right? Fucking a hundred times, a hundred times in history, people will write about, about, look at these, look how troubled our times are, right? Times are always troubled. It's how you cope. It's how you deal with it, right? It's, it's like how you, how you, how you surf the waves, right? Because, uh, because all times are fucked up, right? I, you know, look at New York City. It's falling apart, people killing each other. There's, uh, <clears throat> rampant violence on the street again. The, the economy, we're run by idiots. The economy is in the toilet. But, uh, but uh, somehow you find a way to cope, right? So I want to talk about, I want to keep on this theme of, uh, of uh, institutionalized uh, institutionalism and uh, the possible threat of uh, mass violence returning to our city streets. Uh, a, revisit to a, a revisit to a time where things were not nice, things were not safe. Uh, see, see, I'm doing it right now. I'm saying, uh, in these troubled times, right? Um, but nobody, I don't think, I think it's fair to say that nobody wants to get onto the train, uh, subway and have to, you know, not be able to pull out their device and, 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 and surf the web or speak on the phone or even as, as, as little as, you know, wearing a ring, wearing some gold or wearing jewelry or wearing something expensive where someone might decide to steal it from you right down to the shoes you're wearing. If it, if it becomes very violent, but I, I, very bad. But I think the, the thing about institutionalism and um, the military, the, the uh, uh, prison industrial complex is that one of the things we fail to realize is that some people like jail. Uh, some people become accustomed to living in a, in a cell. They become institutionalized. And to me, that's a that's a that's significant right now because what's happening is people are being led out onto the street. Institutionalized people that have been institutionalized for quite a while because of the cash bail law here in New York, where ninety percent of quote nonviolent crimes are now let out. The criminals are let out with a DAT, a desk appearance ticket, to come back someday and face trial. Right. And, uh, and the city, is, uh, city, state, and, and federal governments are not equipped to try every freaking case uh, on the books because every criminal is now going to sing the tune. Every, every uh, lawyer is going to tell them, take me to trial because that's what you want to do. Right? So, so what, but what you have now is something different. And this is working theory. This is uh, speculation on my part. But what I sense is this, right? We're seeing violent crime where, where people are, are not even, the criminals are not even afraid to be violent. In fact, they may actually become violent for a reason. Why? Because 90% of nonviolent crimes are let out. So if someone is institutionalized and likes, likes jail, likes to be institutionalized, then for them to get back into jail, into their, their, their comfort zone, because they've been institutionalized, they might have to, they have to go out and commit another crime. Now, in the old days, someone would, you know, if a criminal wanted to go back to jail, I, I, I mean, I know s stories of people would, they'd go into a restaurant, right, and they'd order the most expensive meal. They'd order, you know, you know, three hundred dollar bottle of champagne, and and you know, and a you know, eighty seven dollar entree, and and uh, <laughs> and you know, hors d'oeuvres, and, and and the whole shit, and ring up a you know, ring up a thousand dollars at a fancy restaurant with you and, or maybe just yourself, like a kind of a last meal, and then they would walk up and say, I can't pay, call the police, and the, you know, the the restaurant owner would call the police. It's over two hundred and fifty dollars. That means it's grand larceny. And uh, off to jail you go. But that's the old days, right? Where you could steal a meal and get back into your comfort zone. Now, is it, 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 it right? So, so now, instead of that, you have to commit a violent crime. A violent crime to get back into jail. Now, am I over-exaggerating to say that some people like jail? 
Mm, I don't think so. I think people are very, very, I think people that are institutionalized and have nothing uh, feel totally hopeless. They like that structure. They like to be told what to do. They, they have three hots and a cot. They, you know, everything is predictable. Someday they'll be in a, in a state prison where people will, you know, they'll have uh, maybe solid, maybe people like solitary confinement, whatever it is. But the, the fact is that once institutionalized, people get comfortable there. And my suspicion is that we're seeing, and I'm going to show a, a very, very graphic, disgusting video of two older gentlemen on the subway, on the 7 train, getting stabbed by some thug. You see it on video. They're cut. Two 70-year-old men attacked on the 7 train here in New York City. Now, does it happen all the time? And now we're just talking about it now because of, uh, no, it, it's, not, it's not common. That's not a common sight to see some crazy fuck, you know, lunge at two old men and cut them and try to kill them on the subway. See, that's a new trend. Who is that guy? Who is that guy? I guarantee you, I don't know for sure, but I guarantee you if you do a little research, you'll find that that guy is a, uh, is a convict and uh, he's probably, you know, being spit out of the system. So, so, uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's what I'm, I want to talk about. We'll talk about some other side stories, uh, and then we'll, we'll, I'll show you the video, and then we'll, we'll talk about it in, in uh, detail. But first, become a Patreon of this channel. Good morning, everybody. Marcus Conte reporting. This is my uh, channel. This is uh, MarcusConte.com. Uh, uh, and uh, kindly become a Patreon of this channel. This is how I keep it going, uh, through your contributions, through your support, through your, uh, you know, the, the chat is amazing. The amazing supporters that are that are helping um, keep this thing going for whatever reason. You know, I don't I don't take it personally. I don't I don't let it inflate my ego. I just feel like maybe I'm some guy that's in the right place at the right time. You know, I'm 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 hardworking. I'm just glad to be part of this this news kind of explosion. This online media explosion. And, uh, you know, I'm just grateful to be out in front of it, I guess, you know, and, and uh, I, I'm not leading shit. I just feel like <laughs> I feel very fortunate to, to, to be able to, uh, uh, to, to be doing something like this uh, for the greater good. Right? I, I feel that way. I always, I always think, am I going in the direction of, of uh, uh, good or am I going in the direction of evil? And I always try to, I, I try to stay, <laughs> stay in good. It's not always easy. So uh, become a Patreon of this channel. That's how I do it, right? So you're $2, $3. I send you some free stickers. You join every month. And uh, that's how we build up the channel, right? It's, uh, and uh, tip jar, too. If you, if you don't want to do that, make a one-time contribution through PayPal. Also, my, my mailing address is not hard to find. If you buy stickers on eBay, you'll find my mail. I send it to you from my house. All right, and uh, so my mailing address, I, you know, I, I accept contributions through the mail as well, well gifts, <laughs> hats, <laughs> you know, whatever, man. I'm going to do some, uh, I'm, I'm working on some, some uh, art uh, T-shirts, T-shirt art, not the, but not the, not the, uh, the uh, stamp them, stamp them out and pump them out kind of T-shirts. I want to make, um, I want to make uh, uh, original art and then uh, maybe, you know, dump them on eBay. And let people have an auction, have a live auction on uh, on eBay, uh, with some very cool shirts that I'm thinking about. And it's not just shirts about me; it's about this uh, coronavirus shit. They're elementary right now. I'll, I'll start showing them as I uh, get them out there. So become a Patreon, and uh, follow my my live auctions that are coming up very soon. Uh, thank everybody in the chat. Good morning, Vinny D. Martini in the chat. I'm starting. I'm, I got to get Vinny back on the show. Vinny's got to come back on the show because I'm. I think I'm distorting his voice now because I haven't heard it for a while. And to me, he sounds like this motherfucker. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think. He, I don't think Vinny really sounds like that anymore. But uh, anyway, Hark for Cinema in the house. Thank you very much for joining me, uh, Renee Cross, Blue Line, Blue Foot, Buddha Girl, Buddha Girl, my favorite, my favorite Buddha on the web. George's son. We will never know who George is because George's son won't tell us. Who George is? Two days, two days take. Good morning, good morning. Always welcome here, Andrew E. Ah, uh, thank you, everybody. So uh, let's not be dicks in the in the chat. Let's have a civilized, a civilized discourse. Let's carry each other. Let's let's um, build each other up rather than tear each other down on this uh, Sunday. 
Uh, oh, I, I also wanted to say uh, with um, uh, what's that that dude's name? Uh, uh, Johnson, um, Will Johnson, Will Johnson, right? The, the gentleman that came to uh, uh, the black. <laughs> he identifies himself as the black Trump supporter. Uh, was here in New York. He did some good work. I like that guy. I don't. I don't like his opinions, <laughs> but I like his work. I like how he uh, he he did some. He did a good video. I should I should have queued it up and, and played a little bit of it. But uh, he did a great job. He came to New York. He had some talks on the street with people. It was interesting. He was he's an interesting guy. Um, actually, he's just he's very skilled. He knows how to uh, he knows how to engage people and bring them right to the right to the line. So I I, I appreciate what he does. But uh, again, I can't jive with his uh, with his uh, boot licking Trump <laughs> Trump nonsense. So let's talk about this, right? So, uh, so in light of coronavirus and people not polluting the shit out of the water as they used to, and polluting the air and running their cars uh, nonstop because gas is cheap, uh, it it does it does uh, uh, the things are clear, clearing up. The nature appears to be clearing up. And one example of that is great white sharks are lurking off of New York City area beaches. <laughs> now, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Surfers love sharks. Don't bother anybody. Sur sharks are very smart. They know what they like. They're not stupid. They don't just eat anything. They don't like humans. Right? They, you don't smell right. You don't taste right. Uh, they're looking for seal. They're looking for, a, like, a porpoise, uh, big fish, a big blue, you know, school blue fish, right? Fucking big fish, tuna fish. Like they know what they like, right? But the, especially seals and the por porpoise, you know, those kind of... Uh, right? so, so we're starting to notice them off, uh, off, uh, off the, sh the shore, right? But what's interesting is this. I, I suspect, are the, are, the, are the sharks, all the sharks that they're talking about, these great white sharks, are chipped. Look at this. At least three great white sharks lurk in local waters with another monster moving our way, a possible fifth man-eater, <laughs> a vulnerable... The venerable, venerable Mary Lee, 16 foot, 3,456 pounds of her. Right? And they go on and on to describe a few more of them. But what's interesting is that they're microchipped. Right? Now, is it possible? Is it? <laughs> here's the clip from Jaws. Let's watch this. Let's watch this clip from Jaws. Remember this? This is uh, the movie Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mechanical shark. Oh, no, no, no. Sharks are way more agile. That was crazy. <laughs> 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 What a fucking scene. What a great scene. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Nobody wants that to happen, right? You're out there surfing one day and you're fucking, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're screwed, right? That's just dope, man. So anyway, but my suspicion is that can they, can they, can the 5G, can the sharks be controlled from the air? <sighs> Think about it. Everybody's saying, right? Everybody thinks that 5G is controlling people, but why not experiment with the, if, if, the, if the sharks in the animal kingdom is already chipped, couldn't we get the, couldn't we drive a couple of microwaves into the sharks and get them to start eating people just to scare the shit out of, scare people out of the water so that the, the, the uh, local, the, the coastal real estate goes down and then the scumbags can come in and buy it up cheap, buy it up on the cheap because nobody wants to go near the water anymore because there's man eating fucking sharks in the water. Just something to think about. Or is it something as simple as the water is clearing up and the sharks like to come in close and check shit out, man? Come in for uh, for for some other things. I, I don't know, man. I don't know, but uh, they are chipped, and that is something to think about. Here's this this pisses me off, man. This is this is garbage right here. Virgin Mary statue vandalized with graffiti in New York City. Who in their right fucking mind? Who who could see any good, any value, any statement whatsoever? of painting idol on the Virgin Mary inside of a church property. Right? 
it, it's just it, it's just bizarre, right? So a spray paint, uh, uh, somebody spray painted idol across the skirt of Virgin Mary in Elmhurst, Queens, early Friday. The statue stands outside. If you did that in my neighborhood, if you did that in this neighborhood and they caught you, uh, uh, you, you got you got some problems. You better hope. Your best your best hope is that the police find you first. The statue stands outside the Cathedral uh, Preparatory School and Seminar on 92nd Street, and it was tagged in black around 3 a.m. Right? Fucking cowards sneak up and do that. I, I don't like it, man. Leave, leave people shit alone, man. Leave people shit alone. But, um, and also, here's, I, I just wanted to throw this out because I saw this article. Um, as we as we desecrate the statues, look, it even says it. As we topple statues, let's also search for our own moral blind spots. And here's a um, this is how chickens are factory farmed. If you if you're not aware of it, they're all jammed in. They start out as uh, eggs, and then they they hatch the eggs, and the chickens take up a little space. And uh, this is a factory farm. It smells like hell in there. It's, they never see the, the, they never see light. It's just suck in the air, suck out the air. And once they're once once the chickens hit a certain age, they just kill them all. They just they round them up. They they throw them into cages. What a life, right? Chickens they're very smart. They're smart beings, right? There's got to be alternatives, alternatives to eating stuff. Why not just lentils? Why not beans? Why not? I mean, I I survive. You know, and look at me, man. Look how fucking beautiful I am. Look look at. Wouldn't you love to be me at 56 years old? I mean, just think about it. Just think about all the benefits right? <laughs> and the moral consequence. Right? So, we, so here we are bitching about statues. And meanwhile, this is what goes on in our name. Forget about what they do to pigs, and cows. Chickens are smart. Chickens are pets. I know many people that have, have had chickens uh, and they become so friendly that they can't eat them anymore. You know, they become, because they they all have different personalities if allowed to live their, their lives. So that's all. As we pull down controversial statues and reassess historical figures, I've been wondering what our grandparents, our great-grandchildren will find bewilderingly immoral about our times, about us. I, I would guarantee you, I mean, because this generation, this this millennial generation, a lot of them know this stuff. They don't preach it. A lot of them know the, the atrocities that go on in our name in uh, factory farming and uh, any other type of farming. I, I can't say that things, what is humanely raised? Uh, there's nothing. Nothing, even if a cow, even if a, even if a, a, a deer lives, lives out its life in the w uh, wilderness and some crazy guy with a bow and arrow, you know, comes along and, and shoots him in the head because he thinks it's fun and he calls it a sport, um, there's still that's still murder. That's still that's still taking life for really no reason. I mean, that even even if you eat it, that's still not a reason. So I don't know. Just just something to think about. Just food for thought on this uh, Sunday as we move forward. If we want a civil society, if we want to take the violence out of our society, we might have to reassess the way we treat our food our food chain. Uh, the 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 sheer violence and torture that goes into that uh, uh, that product, as you call it. I don't call it that. Uh, uh, also, breaking news. This, uh, this I think, happened two, two or three days ago, the 11th, uh, yesterday. Cops raid mansion of St. Louis couple who defended home from protesters. This is bad because, because here's some people on their own property defending their own property, and, um, and someone comes along and takes the thing that they were defending themselves with. Uh, foul. Right? Now, the subway, right? You can't, ride, you can't ride the subway in New York City with a gun. Uh, or a sword, or or a baseball bat, or a, you know, or a, a, a high-powered rifle, or even something as as simple as a you know a nice you know nice machete or a knife, you can't have a weapon with you on the on the train legally. So now some kook who comes along with a box cutter and starts slicing you up gets away with it. Uh, I, I don't agree with it. I think the right to bear arms, the, you know, the, you know what I'm saying, man. Fucking. That's, that's, that's what you should, you should be able to, to defend yourself. So let's listen. Let's read. St. Louis authorities confiscated an AR-15 used by Mark McCall, McClowski, uh, who made headlines after his wife Patricia last month when they defended their historic uh, mansion from protesters who had broken down a gate. Hey, you know what? I want to just make, it, make a point here, right? People are fucking ripping me off, man, and I don't, I don't care, right? What the fuck is it doing that now? They're doing me. 
I, I'm they're imitating me. I'm like I'm watching fucking somebody that I really I watch all the time. I and I'm saying this motherfucker is doing me. I that shit is like now. And someone pointed out to me and said that well that's flattery. You should be you should be flattered. I, and I am. I am. I'm make, I'm just making light of it. That that I am becoming one of the most ripped off ripped off fucking characters on YouTube. Who would have fucking thought that shit, man? Right? I'm just a guy, man. I just. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to profess a little truth, and and uh, you know it pays to to be a cartoon character, right? I just this is how I am, man. So, fucking getting ripped off, man. So these people got their gun taken away. That's not cool. It's not cool. Police executed a search warrant Friday evening, uh, seizing the rifle used in the June 28th incident. Uh, not good. Not not fucking good. What's this? Yes. Oh, we already saw this. I don't want to play it again. I don't want to play it. They're the same. Oh, let's watch it again. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, this is uh, more people showed up here. They got a gate. They installed a new gate. Fuck you. Get off my property, man. Get off my lawn, right? <laughs> here they are, right? Wheeling guns, right? On your own property. Where's the, where's the, where's the crime? Where's the crime? Where is the crime? Because the bullet can travel off your property? No. Stay off my property and I won't have to shoot you. I, 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 I respect that. All right. So you ready? You guys ready for this shit, man? This is fucked up. Right? This is fucked up. So, so on the note of um, uh, prison reform, on the note of, uh, of uh, emptying out the jails of those being held uh, on cash bail, poor people that can't pay cash bail, good thing or bad, um, I think it is a good thing. I, I will defend it. I think that cash bail... Um, does we have to change our system? We have to change the system because if we're to say that people are innocent till proven guilty, can't hold them in a prison cell on a very very high cash bail, and and make their lives miserable, and then force them to take a plea before their trial because nobody wants to have, you know, if everybody enters the jail system and says they're innocent, they have to be, or or everybody who's arrested is innocent. Then, then we'd have to expand the the um, the court systems, the 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 trials tenfold. Right? If you're guaranteed a, a you follow what I'm saying, if you're guaranteed by a, a, a trial by jury. So let's watch this video. Hold on, if this if this kind of stuff bothers you, if, you know, uh, hold on for this one. Let me start it again. So. So, as I say, it's disturbing, right? It's pretty fucking disturbing to watch. Let's watch it one more time. So you, you see, you see, this guy is. The camera went on, and the guy is pummeling these two people. They're they're, they're both over seventy years old, by the way. They're seventy year old white men. And his brother thinks he's, I can't really tell. And there, he stabs him right there. Right there, he stabs him again on the side. It really isn't just another day in his life. It's not another day. The subways are very, very calm and, and, and have been very non-violent for a very long time. So does this homeboy right here, does this guy enjoy jail? Is he like, is he, is he what I said at the very beginning? Right. Is he institutionalized, motherfucker, and, and uh, he figures if I rob him, I can't get back to jail? Does he want to go back to jail? Do people really, really want to go back to jail? Well, the, the, the studies show that, that, yes, people become institutionalized and they can't cope. So they figure, ah, I'll go back to jail and I'll figure it out. Right? And they sit there and they, they get their three hots and a cot. Three hots and a cot. Right, so let's read the story. Wild video has emerged. 
Two men stabbed in wild New York City subway attack. It's on the 7 train, by the way. I saw, the, uh, I saw it just for a background. So that's uh, Queens. It, it comes through. The 7 train runs from, uh, from the west side of Manhattan, and it runs across 42nd Street, and then it, it, it crosses over out of Manhattan into Queens uh, and makes its way out to um, uh, Shea Stadium. So, so that's, uh, that's the train you're on. Uh, right. Well, let's listen. Wild video has emerged of a bizarre stabbing on a Queens subway in which two men were attacked by a knife-wielding stranger. Uh, the partially caught... Uh, on video brawl began on the 7 train when the suspect, Patrick Chambers, 46, shouted at two elderly men sitting across from him, why aren't you, you home with your kids, police said. So he's a crazy guy, right? He's just, he's, he didn't even try to rob him. He just went right for the, right for the stabbing. Chambers then pulled out a blade, uh, uh, allegedly slashing and stabbing the men. Allegedly? Now you see it on video who are both in their 70s, both men in their 70s, 46-year-old Patrick Chambers, stabbing two 70-year-olds. The mayhem erupted at 7.25 a.m. on July 5 uh, as the train rolled through Sunnyside. Footage shows the bloody tussle after it began with the victim on the floor of the train. A woman can be heard screeching in the background. Well, we heard it already because we just watched the goddamn thing. The apparent stabber clad in black baseball cap. Hmm. Black baseball cap. <laughs> I, better, I better change my cap. Gray tank top and slacks appeared to kick at the man on the floor before walking away in the other direction on the car, only to return to one of them, jabbing him at least once with the knife, the clip shows. Eventually, the attacker leaves the train, car, blah, blah, blah. What else do we know? Chambers was arrested and charged with two counts of assault, Two counts of menacing and criminal possession of a weapon, uh, which cops recovered from the suspect. So, so what the hell is this? What the hell is this? Is this just? Is just? Is it? Is it a result of the cash bail that there are? There's no longer consequences to our actions, or is it someone? Is it just? Is it that case too, where people are just let out, and they have severe psychological problems? Severe, you know, uh, they're on medications, and then suddenly they're 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 at Rikers Island, and they're they're on their medications, and then they open the door and they push you out the fucking door, uh, back onto the cold city streets or the hot city streets, with no. I mean, again, I always say, you know, I worked in the healthcare, I worked in healthcare, I also worked in in the HRA, the the uh, welfare system, uh, and to let someone out. Uh, onto the street with no with no food, no ingenuity, uh, uh, and no money, no just the clothes on your back, is is just a recipe for disaster. Especially if you're opening up the spigot, opening up the prisons to people. Well, not the prisons because that that doesn't apply to the cash bail, but you're opening up the the jails for people that have been in there six months, eight months, waiting for a trial. A year, two years. You're not supposed to be held in, in jail more than a year or two, but uh, it happens all the time. So you're letting out you're letting out institutional people with nothing and nobody out on the street, and this is what happens. In my humble opinion, this is the result of that, I, or people that are are in that situation that may the the crime may not have been violent, but they were sedated. While in, while in city jails, especially in Rikers Island here in New York, there are medications. You will be medicated if you're crazy. They're not going to tolerate that shit. They'll, they'll shoot you up with whatever they need to do. And, uh, oh, you know what I did heard, I, what I did hear? Uh, the Jesus of, I'm, I don't want to give too much of it away, but the Jesus of, uh, of, uh, of Washington Square Park was finally t- taken into custody, arrested, because he was dangling he was taking a shower balls out dick out balls out ass out taking a shower in the middle of the fountain while the while cops were trying to get him out of there he turned the water on and he was he was in the fountain right? but there's some there's another twist to that story how they apprehended him and uh, i wasn't there but i have an eyewitness that i want to talk to who uh who uh I, i'll tell you more about the story but they they they, they sedated him on the spot right? they shot him up 
And, uh, and I have a couple, I, I just did, I failed, I was talking to someone who saw it, I know where to find the person, and I'll, I'll get that story, uh, but uh, they, they shot that motherfucker up or something. So, so that's that. So let's talk, about, let's talk about prisons. How many people are locked up in the United States? A lot. Uh, the U.S. locks up more people per capita than any other nation at the staggering rate of 698 per 100,000 residents. Uh, but to end mass incarceration, we must first consider where and why 2.3 million people are confined nationwide. And if you look the cash bail thing, how it affects people, uh, how it affects us. Once in state prison, you've already been convicted and cash bail doesn't apply. Right? But it's probably the people that were on cash bail being taking the plea bargains and then they end up in state prison where there's no return until their sentence is up. But let's look over here in, in local jails, and you see that 470,000 non-convicted people are in jail, as opposed to 161 convicted. That is, that is like four to one. That, that 75% of the jail population in cities, at least in my city, are non-convicted people. They're being held on this cash bail nonsense. They can't get out. If they were rich and they had money, they'd get right out. But just think, of, think about that for a second. Think about the, 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 the problem. Is it a violence problem in our country? Is it a drug problem in our country that causes people to commit crimes? Or is it the way we perceive crime? What is crime? What, when we choke people out and they have nothing and then they steal a hamburger, is that really a crime or is that survival? I, even a hungry animal will jump a fence to, to steal your tomatoes and eat them. Uh, uh, is, is the, is the, uh, uh, I watch a channel. It's called Chunk. Uh, it's this uh, groundhog, a family of groundhogs that come out and eat. <laughs> I'll play one one day. Uh, Chunk. Uh, used to, they used to, the family of groundhogs used to steal food from this, uh, from this garden until people finally made peace with it. And then they created their own, they created a garden just for the, for the, um, for the uh, groundhogs to come in and eat. Uh, now, whether, whether groundhogs committing a crime is what I wanted to say. It, it, is an animal committing a crime by, by, by slipping under a fence and grabbing a tomato and, and feeding itself? No, it's not. And that's, that's what we have to look at in the society. We have to look at... at at the, and I'm, again, I'm no bleeding liberal. I'm no le liberal, extreme left, extreme right. I'm none of those things. I'm just a, a, a logical thinker saying, how do we solve the problem? Do we make more punishment? Does that work? Do we lock up more people? How's that working out for you? Is it working? Is our system working? Can anybody raise their hand and say that our system of imprisoning people is working? No. It, it requires an enormous police force, an enormously corrupt uh, civil justice system to keep it going. It, it, it requires keeping drugs illegal. It requires keeping basic uh, uh, petty crimes punishable by years in prison. Right? You know, of course, violent crimes. You don't want violence on the street. You don't, you don't want that. You don't want to have someone, you know, have someone like in the case of the two 70 year old men sitting on the train getting stabbed by some some joker right and and, and getting cut up or you, you you know what's even scarier here's, here's something even scarier right if if a guy like that would come up to someone like me on the train right he he suspects that you know and i'm no tough guy i just i just you know a guy like that wouldn't survive a guy like that would 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 turn it turn his back and and he would he would end up dead. You'd have to kill him. If a guy's swinging a knife on the train like that, and and uh, he doesn't he doesn't know what's coming next, and you crush him and you you smash his head through the window, and take the knife and stick it up his ass, right? Then you go to jail. Right? You see how the violence creates very very bad situations, right? You know, because if, if nobody's there, right? You know, then you defend. Are you defending yourself now? You're on trial. Uh, the police show up. Who who killed who? Oh, that guy's dead, and then they handcuff you, and you have to explain your way out of killing this guy because he was about to kill two seven-year-olds. Uh, so there's all kinds of problems, right? You don't want violent crime. You don't want to. You want to eliminate 
eliminate violent crime. And you got to ask yourself, what's causing it? What is, why? And, and you look at these statistics and you say, 2.3 million people in jails. And, and 75% of those in, in jails, 2.3 million imprisoned, are, you know, in captivity. And, and 75% of those in jails are non-convicted. You gotta really, you gotta really ask yourself: Are we doing this right? Are we doing this jail thing right? So here's a guy. I don't think so. And um, here's a couple of videos. We'll, we'll watch some of these videos. This guy is like he's a prison guy. But listen to what he says uh, initially. All right, he's a uh, penitentiary guy. Watch this. Institutional life will always end up in you being institutionalized. It's up to you whether it's a good way or a bad way. I'm institutionalized in a fucking good way and I love it. I'm super patient and I'm programmed towards my goals and this is a great aspect of becoming institutionalized. It's more of just the traits that I wanted to possess that I saw I could create through this negative time. Whoa, I love it. I love my institutionalism, right? You see the structure? See, even if, it's, even if it's ugly and bad, it's something. He's got his three hots in a cot. He probably does a 1,000 push-ups a day. He's living large. He is living. Maybe that guy on the train wants to go back to jail and live, right? He wants to get his, he doesn't know where to get his medications because he, he's, he doesn't know anything. He was thrown out on the street without any tools. Uh, again, I'm assuming because I don't know what the guy's story is, but I, I'm reason, I could be reasonably sure that that's what's going on. He wants to go back to his jail. He wants to go back where I was on a methadone program. Where's my shit? I don't know how to get no shit without that. Uh, he, he was taken care of in jail. Institutionalized. The prison industrial complex. A business. This is a business for people. To institutionalize people. To wipe their brains clear. You know, uh, uh, you, you know gaslight the shit out of people. And then... And then make a, you know, uh, uh, send them back out onto the street. And we'll call that uh, correction. We'll call that correctional facility. So let's listen a little more. So I've become super patient by my own doing. Going through shit like these bus rides. This one time, this 28-hour bus ride to Oklahoma from Arizona was massively trying. And everybody who was on that bus was straight broken by the time we got there. The type of patience you get during something like that, when you're handcuffed, you're black boxed, which is a crazy fucking torture device that someone created, where your hands are touching each other, and you're trying to eat your meals and everything like that for 28 hours is fucking straight up torture. There's nothing else around it. Eight hours in, you're thinking, damn, uh, how am I gonna fucking do this? 14 hours in, you're just like, I, I may fucking die. By the time 28 hours are in, you're fully just exhausted to the fucking core. And now you got to get off the bus and spend about an hour and a half in R&R, &R, which is where you enter the prison. And they got to do butthole checks and every random tattoo check to make sure who the fuck you are and everything like that before you finally get to your cell. But this was one of the crazy things I saw. So even on the... Even under insane adversity, you see how, how it seems normal, how, how the whole thing is normalized. Right? And right, so is there an argument that our criminal justice system is fucked up? I, I just saw Vinny Martini say in the chat that, that uh, it is a cash cow. People have no idea just how bad it is. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, it is a cash cow. It's a system of, of checks and balances. You know, there's... I, I, for example, in New York, there's a jail called uh, Danamora or Clinton. Uh, in Clinton, New York, it's called Danamora. Or is it Danamora, New York? Anyway, but that's where the Son of Sam is being held. Uh, so, many, so many crazy, uh, crazy uh, uh, criminals from New York are held up there. And, you know, the town itself is, is, is dependent on that jail. Most of the, a lot of people that work there are correction officers. They, they do the food service. They do the clothes, the laundry, the everything that's required of a, of a uh, to keep a jail go a prison going in in a in a place where there is no other you know uh, uh, economy. Uh, the jail becomes the economy. The prison becomes the economy. So then there's you know 
it's 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 a cash cow. You got to keep the thing going. If there's nobody there, if there's nobody committing crimes, if judges are not arresting, if police are not arresting people and judges are not convicting them and sending them off to the prison, then we're not going to eat. All right? Fuck that shit, man. Stop locking people up so we could eat. You see how the prison industrial complex takes off? So then you start to you start to you start to criminalize petty crime like jumping the turnstile or stealing a hamburger and you let crimes like you know uh uh 35 billion dollar tax evasion by apple uh let that slide let politicians lie to congress let that slide let a let an fbi agent uh, uh lie and try to uh incarcerate a sitting president uh, we'll let that one slide let corporate America create derivatives that rip off the economy and crush, crush people and crush nations. That's okay. That's not crime. That's, uh, you know, when, when people in suits and ties and businessmen do it, that's okay. That's okay. That's not crime. No, no, no. Crime is when, when a hungry person uh, uh, gets a little too aggressive trying to, trying to get a meal. And, and, and he doesn't know. He, he just he's tired of hearing no. Give me the fucking money because I'm hungry. Damn it. I know that taking five dollars from you is not going to kill you. Give me the five dollars, right? So I don't have to kill you. Right? That's what starts to happen. Right? It's, it's you know, and, and then and what do I care? I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't give nothing, man. Fuck you. I kill you, man. I kill you. I go back to jail. I don't give a fuck, man. It's better than jail. I'm better off in jail. Yeah, that's what and then that's what you start to hear, right? So so I think we got another clip of this guy. I don't know who he is. I just found it this morning. Wes, Wes Watson. When you do a massive stretch in the penitentiary, three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, this turns you into a beast mentally, but it causes you to become institutionalized. You have quirks, traits, and habits that normal society- Buffering, right? Buffering? How are we buffering? If we're buffering, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing it on my end. I'm seeing the red. Okay, uh, just, just bear with it. Bear with it. Let's listen again to what he said. I, I don't want you guys to miss this. Uh, I don't know. When you do a massive stretch Sorry in the penitentiary. Sorry about that. Just one more time. Three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. This turns you into a beast mentally, but it causes you to become institutionalized. You have quirks, traits, and habits that normal society, everyone out here on the streets, thinks is crazy. I mean, it's very important what he's saying. You have quirks and behaviors that people outside think is, are crazy. I right, see so you're walking around, you think you're crazy. If you're not, if you don't have, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, look, I'm, look how crazy I am. I can't survive out here because I'm so different. All my behaviors are crazy. That's institutionalism. You're institutionalized and you feel comfortable when you go back to jail. You feel like, you know, or, or you know, I remember my only, my only, I guess, uh, uh, experience with institutionalism is, uh, was uh, drug rehab. And uh, I had been in one for 30 days. It was a 30-day rehab. And you, you see how they don't want to leave. We well, even in meditation centers. Sometimes you'll see people after 10 days. I'm buffering again. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna, do I got to play a buffering song? I got to play the buff, buffer song. It's time for the buffering song. Buffer me, I'll buffer you. What's a homo supposed to do? Buffer me, I'll buffer you. What's a buff? What? Are we still buffering? I got a buzz in this guitar. I got to fix it. See, see this buzz? That's my E. That's my E string. It shouldn't sound like that. I don't know what it is. But anyway. So, I guess we're not buffering anymore. Uh, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be... <laughs> reporting above 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 above
Buff, 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 buff. So uh, what else? What else we got here? So uh, that's really it. We got the whole thing out uh, before. Before I hate the buffering, but I love the buffering song. Oh, yeah, me. It's it's right. See, you see how adversity you turn adversity into something, you know, something effective. I don't. Uh, I'll wrap it up in a second. Uh, I had one more. I think I had one more article. Yeah, U.S. prison system is broken beyond repair. What can replace it? That's the thing. I just like the title. Uh, want to improve conditions for those behind bars? Then don't just call for a few changes, according to activists. Uh, what we need to do is to get rid of the entire criminal justice system as we know it. Wow. And that's precisely what those young people on the street are saying. We need to tear down the system. Right? So don't, don't disregard the youth. Although we don't agree, agree with everything they say, there is a lot, a lot of truth. The young people, the Black Lives Matter, led this thing. Right? The, the progressive left is really who said, let's, uh, let's eradicate cash, bond, uh, cash bail. Right? They, they're the ones who led that charge. Bernie Sanders was saying it all. Uh, Bebop. <laughs> Bebop says, Marcus even looks like a musician. I am a musician. I don't fucking look like one. I am a musician. I've been a musician my whole life. It's not something I like to call myself, but I, I mean, I've been called worse. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've been called worse. Uh, so who's intimidating Marcus? Uh, uh, imitating. Not intimidating. Nobody's going to intimidate me, but uh, imitating. I, I, I mean, I saw it with my own eyes, man. I saw it fucking with my own eyes. So uh, anyway, that's all I got today, man. Marcus Conte reporting. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, see who wants to take us out. I like this tune. <laughs> So thank you everybody for joining me. Have a wonderful Sunday. Have a wonderful Sunday. Two days to two days to be Bobby in the house. Can I say cheeseburger? Michael Hill, the goatee, George's son, Arthur Cinema, his lamb, his lamb. Arthur Cinema is it Monday yet? No. Monday? Sunday, tomorrow, Arthur Cinema. JB in defensia the Priyanji Kaka. His lamb. Uh uh Jim Gerard. What's up, Jim Gerard? Joanne Monkey. Judy, Judy Zin. Judy Z is here. Martin Gefrada. Fletcher Orange. TJ TFB. Bing V Ryan Family. Bing V Ryan Family. Martini. Also Family Woo. Martini on the chat. You got timed out. You got timed out. Man. You got That's not my problem. I can't help you. You got, you got timed out. Just, you're YouTube institutional. Institutional. Learn how to learn how to shut your hole. You be good.